Now, what you experienced may be something that you want to keep inside, may be something that you would like to share with others. If anybody would like to share what you experienced, you can have the floor for a moment. Yes. Um, what I was feeling going in this, that I, I guess I've not had this really before, but when we sat on the bench and it was like a being, kind of reminding me of somebody in robes, but as we got up to walk, I felt, uh, before you even said you're going together, um, it come like within me, like we became, it was just like one walking down. And I even got a name, like, I mean, it's, an, it's not even a name, it sounds like an Indian name or something, like Great. letters that don't even make sense, but it was just a real comfort. Excellent, excellent. I had an amazing experience. It's just amazing. I walk three dogs through the woods practically every day, my children's dogs. And there's a, a tree that is dead from the storm and it's left there with all wet. I saw the tree as the death of the control over humankind. It, 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 was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It's like dead and gone. And the interesting thing uh, in, in real life, you go down these steps uh, overlooking the, the water, and the tree is down, in the, down there. And then when I walk up, and there's um, a lake with the bench there. <laughs> I have a black, one of my dogs that I walk is a black lab, and she went swimming. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing, it was beautiful. And my guide came and sat with me. And he's my guide that's been taking me from amazing experiences. And it's Jesus. It was awesome. And then I have a Tibetan terrier that is one of them, and he just adores me. And it, the whole thing was beautiful. So I thank you. It was a fantastic experience. Anybody else? Nothing on earth is what it appears to be. Ram Dass talked about the layers, the levels. Some are relatively real, some are real. You just experience a little bit of reality. You will always know that your day-to-day -day life, your activities are relatively real. Useful, good teachers but do not control you. Yes? I don't really remember your voice much at all and all the things we were supposed to do. I kept kind of falling forward and having to bring myself back. Um, but I do distinctly remember walking a path with some being and going to a cave, and at the very end when you were saying, oh, you have a flower, and I thought, well, where's my flower? I don't even know where I've been. And I don't have a flower, and just before you said to open your eyes, a flower appeared in my hand, and it's like nothing I've ever seen before. And so I know I've been somewhere, but I'm not quite sure <laughs> exactly what happened. Beautiful. So, Every experience is perfect for what we need at the moment. Yeah. We just want to know we're more expanded, we're more expansive, we're more connected, we have better guidance than we ever imagined. We want to live life differently every moment from now on. It's not the same life you had yesterday. 
One of your assignments is never watch the news again. Never watch the news again. I do read the newspaper because I like peanuts. The comics. That's all. Don't look at the front page. Those who are greedy specialize in drama because drama sells papers. Hmm. I stopped watching the news two and a half years ago. Two and a half years without watching the news. That's good. It's like saying I've been sober for one year, two months, seven days. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch the news. Yeah. I'm not quite clear about her talking about how when you're <clears throat> when you're going with the flow, then you then you lose then you you gain control. Um, going with the flow gives you back control. Well, I might say that a little differently. Going with the flow gives control back to your guidance. You stop fighting your guidance. When you're paddling upstream, doing ought to's and should's and what you were raised to do and what the authority figures say is right, then you are, then your guidance is basically on hold. It's saying, we'll wait. When you get worn out and exhausted, you know, then we'll come in and give you a little guidance. So going with the flow is releasing ego control, which allows spirit control. And spirit knows more about what we want than our ego does. Our ego picks from the available choices, which are extremely limited and usually very materialistic. Spirit does not pick from what we think the available choices are. Spirit picks from an infinite supply of choices to create our next moment, our next day, next year, etc. Keep in mind, if you follow your bliss, which is going with the flow, right, you will be busy. You have a lot to do. Now, the ego defines what busy means. It means hard work. Wrong. You will be busy, but your busy may be Go stand over there a minute. That person needs to feel your energy. Or do your creative painting or writing. Do your journaling. Create a song. Spirit's idea of busy is not at all like your ego's idea of busy. It's fun. It's what you do best. So if you're following your bliss, you are giving control over to, to spirit to guide you, show you your next step, take you where you need to be. You know. Coincidence, synchronicity and coincidence are just other words for God. That's where all the good stuff comes from. Let the universe pick for you instead of trying to pick for yourself. You, you know, you, you've heard me say, it's absolutely silly to try to decide what you're going to do tomorrow. R ridiculous. You have no idea if tomorrow will even exist. We don't know anything about tomorrow from an ego point of view. But guidance knows tomorrow, so guidance knows what would work really well tomorrow. Okay. And everybody's a dowser, you know. Should I do this or that? Yes. Do this, yes. Am I not thinking big enough? Yes. You know. 
So let spirit pick everything. That's going with the flow. If it feels easy, it's going with the flow. If it feels like work, it's ego. And keep in mind that you're facing every, every person who ever brought you up and trained you and told you about the value of hard work. That you were responsible for yourself. You got to look out for old number one. Geez, I'll just quit now if that's the case. I need the universe to take care of me. I don't want to be responsible for me. My responsibility says choose peace. After that, I'm done. The universe then brings the flow to me. Brings it in. Somebody asked Ram Dass once. Uh, Ram Dass was saying uh, he likes to listen to Emmanuel. Emmanuel is a channeled being, and he likes to listen to Emmanuel. And somebody asked him, how do you know that what Emmanuel says is right? And he said, because he agrees with me, of course. <laughs> That's the way we know. That's the way we decide anything is right or wrong, right, if it agrees with us. Well, the Monroe Institute, uh, Bob Monroe, and he was an engineer, and I'm an engineer, so yay, good Bob. Um, uh, he wrote three books, uh, one called Journeys Out of Body. You can skip that one. The second one was called Far Journeys. Excellent. And the third one was called The Ultimate Journey. And he describes he, 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 his knack uh, was going out of body. Every night he would go out of body and his guides would give him experiences. The first book is about him learning to go out of body. <clears throat> and he didn't know, what do you do when you're out of body? Well, you go up and you look at the ceiling. Oh, well, that's interesting. Well, you go through the walls. Well, that's fun. Or, you know, and he went to the moon and he explored the moon and he went here and he went there. And he said, this is pretty boring. And then he got the idea, maybe I could ask for help. So. From then on, before he would go out of body, he would ask his guidance to assist him. And from then on, he had a guide. When he'd go out of body, there'd be a guide there. And he'd let them pick, very wise a thing to do. And so they would pick where, what he was going to examine, what he was going to see. Uh, he went through a period of helping people die, helping people get out of their bodies when they were stuck, and it, a lot of fabulous experiences that he had. He'd do these every night. And then he'd journal them and put them in the books. But one of his experiences was they, they wanted to take him. Uh, he asked if this was his last life. And they said, no, you have one more. And he asked if he could see it. And they took him to where his next and last life was going to be. And it was in the year 3000. And it's just one of my favorite, wow. The Garden of Eden is returning, and it's at its height in the year 3000. And he describes that, and what a place planet Earth is in the year 3000. Everything is just fabulous. The weather is fabulous. The the land is fabulous. The energy is fabulous. People are all out of body. They lay their bodies down and they go do their business. Right? Everybody's traveling out of body. Gods and goddesses everywhere. And boy, that just really resonated with me. I felt that is just absolutely correct. So that, you know, if it, if it agrees with me, it must be right. Yeah. <laughs> Once you're on a path where you say, hey, no matter what, I'm going to that light right there. I remember the dream. I had dreams are my guidance. One of my big guidances saying from here on, it's all micro struggles. 
all micro struggles, no big ones anymore. Just the, whew, thank you. Good times. Yeah. Okay, so you can look forward to all the pressure being off even before you become an enlightened soul. Okay, good stuff.